Well, I, I, I think I first met Dave in 1997, and I, I absolutely share his frustration with why hasn't things happened more quickly. Um, I came out of banking, and I see zero bankers in this room today, which is disappointing. Uh, I remain convinced that the role of the world's regulated financial institutions has a particular role to play in trust, in identity, if you will, in non-repudiation, and so on and so on. Um, I put together very few slides, and I'm not really going to go through because many of you will have seen all of these countless times. What do we mean by identity in our world? Those are what we mean. Certainty of who you're interacting with, being able to validate, knowing who guarantees it, being a name, not just a number, having complete trust to act on the instructions, having the audit trail, and seeing electronic identity as a key component in limiting liability and external exposures. <coughs> Today we have a bunch of solutions around the world, some defined by nations. We've heard about Austria. We can look at pretty much any other European nation and so on. We have a bunch of solutions defined by industry verticals, pharmaceutical, aerospace, government. We have a bunch of solutions <coughs> defined by application. How are you going to use the credential? They're all still circling around each other, whereas the Nirvana surely is to have a common framework that can cover those three dimensions. Let's have a look at the banks. They're about the most highly regulated sector of any nation state economy, without being, give or take the odd nationalization, without give or take being actual public <coughs> sector instruments. Banks do three things today. They manage operational risk, they manage capital market risk, and they manage credit market risk. Now, most people in the media, most commentators, think about banks just in the lending world, or they think about big swinging dicks, masters of the universe, call them what you like, in the capital markets world. Actually, the thing that really makes banks particularly useful in our space, in our EID space, is operational risk, is the ability to manage transactions. And I think what we're going to see over the next few years, maybe even less, is a greater split of the credit of the lending functions of regulated financial institutions and of the capital market functions back to sort of pre-Glass-Steagall, if you will, and actually a much greater opportunity for those top management in banks, if they really think about it, to do far more to help their customer value proposition by focusing on transaction management. How can I help my customer manage operational risk in a world of ubiquitous, instantaneous electronic networks, i.e. the internet? That has to be the holy grail for these institutions. Why hasn't it happened before? Well, a variety of reasons. I do think that government, is, particularly in this country, has uh, a substantial responsibility to help make it happen. At Identrus, way back, we went to government and we were talking to government about the, the use of uh, bank-issued credentials specifically in the business-to-government environment. So not in the citizen, not in all this stuff with universal credits and all the rest of it, but looking at simple things like the submission of electronic VAT returns using exactly the same credential that a bank issues to a treasurer today in a company to electronically sign, to authenticate himself, his company, and to submit a return into government. And equally, government would also have a credential under the same trust model to send stuff back to the company. Those are relatively simple applications. They could be done today, and yet we're still to use Dave's word, we're circling round and round and round. So watch the space, I think, with... with um, yeah, I, so I, mean, I, I, I do think there is an enormous role for these organisations who historically have exchanged trusted information in the form of cheques way back in the Lloyd's Coffee House to take that same practice and use that same underlying platform for lots and lots and lots of other applications along the transaction cycle.
it, it has to happen that way. It redefines the role of a bank, and, and so it should. Um, it's, it's not new. It's not anything rocket science. It is based upon what banks have done historically for years. If you think about the exchange of checks, of, of movement of money, all they are are bits of paper that move from one place to another under a set of pre-agreed rules that everybody signs up to and everybody knows what their liabilities are and are not. So all we're trying to do in the internet era in a global context is to do exactly that. It's like a clearing system. There is your clearing system. Now, I, all identrous is, and I'm not here to flog identrous, but it is a con you can call it whatever you like, but it is a, simply a clearing house, if you will, wherein it is able to validate one bank wherever it is around the world and another bank wherever it is around the world. And those banks themselves are the ones who actually issue the credentials and so on. So we hear in our world a lot of talk about federated identity. This is the far and away the best example of a federated identity model that exists today. It's, just, it's, it's akin to the United States, to the United States Constitution that binds all 50 states together under a common set of operating rules. Now, each, each state has its own relationship with citizens in the United States, but they're all operating under that common framework. So it's not like having a link from one technology to the next, then from that to the next, then that from the next, which is what lots of people in the technical world will talk about federated identity around, because that's how risk moves from one island to the next. And people don't know when, when what they're actually inheriting from two islands down the road. This is absolutely rock solid. And, and again, it seems to me compellingly obvious. Um, I don't really need to go on at any great length ar around the sorts of different opportunities, different applications that, it, that a common trust model could support. But it seems to me absolutely fundamental. Um, those are some of the applications we are working on. And I think in terms of a, a slightly brighter note, um, there is stuff happening today in, the, in something called the EBAM world. Now, not, many of you won't know what an earth EBAM is, but it's the electronic management of bank account mandates. It's the ability for companies around the world to alter, update, initiate, and change bank mandates, wherever they may be, using electronic credentials to do that. So instead of the treasurer or the head of procurement having to send his passport off to Ecuador next month off to Vietnam. It is all done electronically. And there is real demand now from the end user, from the end customer of banks, that's actually at last starting to drive some adoption of this sort of common framework. So EBAM is something to watch. And quite frankly, there is no reason why the British government, who've got, probably got bank accounts all over the place, shouldn't start looking at something like EBAM. It, it's perfectly possible for government to do that. So th there are a few um, uh, uh, sort of bright areas. I, th I think that's really all I've got to say. I think that London in particular has got to take a, a lead in this. If, if I was at a, a speech last night, well, at a, an event where Boris was speaking, and you know, he quite rightly was positions that London. Said, was that when he said some people are just too thick? That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Centre for Policy Studies, and he was giving the third Margaret Thatcher lecture. And he was actually quite interesting because he said, you know, he was saying, what would Margaret Thatcher be doing if she were here in today's environment? And uh, he, did, he didn't actually mention the internet. I, I rather wish he would have done. But um, um, it, he was obviously saying, here is London potentially, you know, and likes to think itself really as the global capital for commerce. So we ought to be in London. We shouldn't be sitting here 14 years after Dave Birch and I first met or 15 or whatever it is, still talking about this stuff. We ought to be leading it. We ought to have our damn banks, great respect, actually doing this stuff. 